Hey, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm going to bring in my friend, my brother, my debate partner, my confidant, popularly will refer to him as the only motherfucking 20 something who I will ever take any advice from. <laughs> Guys, man, say what up to Mr. Balliet Baran. Yo, yo, what's up, Fast Child? It's okay. <laughs> What's up, brother, man? I'm sorry to make you sit through all of that, uh, sir. Oh, it's all good, dude. Uh, it's it's cool to cool to see you starting to uh, to stream, man. Mm, you know uh, as well as anybody the stories, you know, and the delays, and you also know personally from probably I would imagine from your experience some of the difficulties and struggles, right, that you can run up against. Oh, dude, totally. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thing that I was telling, uh, who was it, Monica and, and Crypto Stylist the other day that she she was talking about her streams and uh, her early ones. And if you look at any of the early streams, myself, RG3, Hexo, Crypto Coffee, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's a learning curve with anything. So sometimes it takes a, a couple of streams or things like this to understand StreamYard and, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, muster up the courage to click that go live button, man. Cause <laughs> you know, in life, nothing is ever going to be perfect. And sometimes there's like a, a perfection fallacy sometimes that we have that you I've been guilty that. of as well. Yeah. You nailed that because you know, brand, you, you know, intimately that I had this whole conceptualization in my brain that I was really concretized towards like, I'm fixed. I got to do this this way. I told a lot of you guys, I don't mind saying it out loud because people don't have my scripts, for example, for the um, the comedy skits or whatever, but Thoughts Out envisioned maybe being some kind of esoteric, nonconformist Johnny Carson character for Hexico. And I have this whole variety show idea with a live performance, with an interview, with a monologue, with desk time, the whole show, it's designed. But I got limited time and resources. Um, and I was just like Brand said, man, the fallacy. I was stuck in this thing that I had to make it perfect. Like I had to launch this at, as a finished product before I even bothered to do anything. And it was guys like Brand that just, you know, Brand, Nardo, Wales. These guys are all like, dude, sit down in front of the camera and press play and talk <laughs> it's true man it i mean it really is that simple um but you know with, with anything else i mean whether it's i mean it's just kind of like uh you know the first couple times like uh asking asking a chick out or or go you know mustering up the balls right to, to go walk over to the hottie and uh and say what's up right. you know sometimes your your mind can kind of have like reluctancy and reluctance um but then once you do it, it's like, okay, you know, you, you put yourself in that situation. And, and once again, like it, it only helps you grow from something, right? If you, if you never do that thing that like is holding you back at that time, mm -hmm. then, uh, then that'll just forever be something that holds you back until you actually do it, you know? Yes, my brother. So wait, you're telling me that you, oh, see, I got to learn all about this modern paradigm. I'm glad I have you here. So you don't hit the girl over the head with the club? And drag her back to the <laughs> negatory ghost rider. Oh man, revelation. Thanks. Been dude. doing it wrong the whole time. <laughs> I mean, that's why I have all these consecutive sentences to serve. I couldn't figure it out. God damn. Hey, Brian, I got a question. Are you, I'm not even seeing a logo, an icon, an avatar, or your camera. Uh, what are you supposed to be black screen here or, uh, you're not joking? I don't know. I, I I should look on YouTube. I'm looking on StreamYard and I don't see you. I only hear your voice. Uh, interesting. Uh, let, let me refresh on... Uh, I see myself on, on YouTube, yeah. Do you? Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder what's up yeah, with StreamYard then. Interesting. Hmm. I'm okay. not too sure, but... Uh, hmm. You know, that's, that's one of those things that... Uh, yeah, you know, there, you there can Brandon. be weird glitches okay. or... Um, you mentioned that you kind of got like a good audio setup, which is pretty cool too. You know, I've made such rookie mistakes before, dude. Like I've got like a physical soundboard mm -hmm. and then, you know, anyone that's done 
a stream yard you can you can click the mute button um you know digitally but i physically muted myself one time when i was getting some water i didn't want the <laughs> the noise to be too loud and i totally forgot to hit the unmute button dude and i was you know speaking for like five minutes and in the way that i address the chat is you know i try to do it one at a time and kind of you know cover everyone's comments and i noticed that about you time. right yeah. yeah yeah and so i didn't get to the your muted comments until like five minutes down and i was like oh shit, that was kind of embarrassing but, whoa you know. whoa sorry i just found it i just found my own stream on youtube okay nice, dude, dude told... sometimes that's half the battle finding yeah. your own streams Oh yeah, yeah, especially since I'm a new channel. Um yesterday was the first time I ever got to the business of searching like my own name either on a Mediger, uh DuckDuckGo, Google Search or on any of the popular platforms and I don't exist. I'm not there, but you know what was really disturbing that comes up? It's not hard to guess, right? That very famous European dynasty <laughs> family that's what comes up because they're assuming, oh, this dumb asshole misspelled what he meant. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, uh oh, Thought Child's going to slip in the shower tomorrow morning. <laughs> you know, carp, the brakes aren't going to work on dude. the truck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he pays, pays to test the, uh, the brakes before you, before you drive your car, right? Before you put Jeez, that sucker man. in to, uh, to drive. Dude, I don't trust these. Wouldn't be the first time. I don't trust these modern vehicles with the motherboard like the controlling microchip that every single element of the vehicle runs off this motherboard. Like I, I used to drive like, for example, VW buses, where if you broke down on the side of the road, dude, you could literally like replace a belt with a boot lace or a sneaker lace, you know, Damn. like you think you yeah. could do that with a Tesla. <laughs> no, it's funny that you say that. Cause, cause yeah, yesterday I was at, lunch with a friend celebrating something and uh you know in, instead of walking i uh, i took the uber and and yeah there was like a tesla that had picked me up and 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 so that was the first time ever being in a tesla and uh you know i'm like how the how like how the heck do i open the actual door itself like nothing nothing is you know sometimes they try to do things that like look cool and they sacrifice the convenience of like modern, modern door system. Like it's, it, you know, not like a typical lever that you kind of just pull or, or that you open this way. It was like a button. And then I don't know, dude, I, I agree. Have to do yeah. some yoga in front of the door for it to open. Right. You have to do like a Tai Chi <laughs> pose and then the door opens. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, man. It's, it's, it's quite, quite ironic. Um, sometimes those things, you know, and, and for me, yeah, I mean, the second car that I owned was like a five-speed, and I still have it actually, but it's a five-speed, you know, manual transmission. And and I, I like to be in control, you know, in, in oh, many yeah. different things. And I like to be in control of the car and not have it uh, automatically do these things for me in, in that. Like my, my awareness is pretty keen. I'm with you on that. The one place that I'm starting to, to loosen up on it, and this is, I kind of think the idea was stuck in my head from my father. He used to say, I work too fucking hard to get off work at the end of the day and shift gears. So I think my time with the, the old uh, manual is coming to a conclusion. I always thought that was fucking hilarious. Like, I'm too tired from work to even shift gears. You guys in trades will understand that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, okay. no. Um, I mean, in the Seattle area, dude, I've had some pretty pretty scary experiences because the the car that I have that's a you know that's five speed. I, I don't really even drive it actually at all anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, so what is that like a two thousand two thousand five? And you know, there's there's no hill assist or anything like that, obviously. So I had to literally. I'm not a bumper sticker guy. I'm not at all. But you you always see all these people with a million different bumper stickers in Seattle. But right. I had to at least get one that said, hey. This is a manual transmission like this car is going to roll back because so many people that are aggressive drivers get right up on your ass and mm -hmm. then it's like hey the second that i you know let go of the brake and and uh you know start engaging the clutch and gas it's gonna roll back a smidge so i've had had a couple of those scary experiences because like seattle stereotypically has got like these big freaking hills that are you know at least oh yeah is that 15, a hilly, hilly town san francisco's hilly and pittsburgh is extremely hilly um didn't know that about seattle i haven't been to the pacific northwest yet so i'm coming to see you this year all right 
Hey, man. For tell, sure, dude. Oh, your girlfriend. Tell it's child. I'll be, I'll, be, <laughs> I'll, be at, I'll be at PulseCon, too. Um, you know, Finn Bear says, modern cars are all remote controllable suicide attack waiting to happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I right. like things that can't get hacked into, you right. know, at least when it comes to <laughs> the freaking death machine that you're driving. Man, you ain't never lied, gents. So, uh, guys, I'm just trying to forgive me if I'm sort of half paying attention. It's no disrespect intended. I'm just trying to kind of uh, promote this a little bit, share this stream out uh, a little bit more. Um, you know, we got um, I forget what it said because they give you the stats and they're like, here is the peak number of concurrent viewers. But then it gives you the total number of viewers, too. I mean. I was pleasantly surprised. I think I'm up to nearly a hundred views on the first uh, stream from last night, which was, you know, highly extemporaneous, highly unprofessional. You know, it's basically a guy on stream working shit out and talking to some of his friends. And we still, you know, got a respectable number of uh, views. But um, yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely giving me my point in bringing it up is it's definitely giving me more of an admiration for these guys like coffee and k4k right like when they're live streaming and you see like three four hundred guys you know whales fucking got like fucking 200 300 i'm like oh my god mm. like you got to work hard to achieve that and then the other feature of that as you know brand is man oh man as soon as that that video goes into that status of where it's getting restreamed you know the replay the the exponential increase in the in the numbers like watching that is the greatest reflection because not everybody's schedule is going to work out to watch your favorite guys right like right when they're streaming but as soon as they plug it in on the replay boy man them numbers start going do, 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 do. i was on whales live streams you know this i, I there'd be 120 people in there and literally in six hours it was like a you know over 1500 views or something it's just mm. amazing no it's true well, yeah, I mean, yeah, and like we've even got people like now the community has just gotten so big that, you know, you've got sometimes two, three, like just the other day, there was like two or three, you know, live streamers at, at once. And, you know, that's definitely a, a sign of growth and, and success. And how cool is it that people have, uh, you know, th they've got not only like an integrity, we kind of kind of like why they're they're streaming and they're putting their their face there on the line and things like that but they've got mm -hmm. like con conviction and, and passion you know behind wanting to start up and you know that's why i said it's uh, it's cool to see you streaming and inviting me on because you know once again everyone does have something to say and and uh different inputs to provide value to so you never really know until you hear someone actually do it i i appreciate that thank you sir you know uh there's a lot more that i have envisioned you know is becoming a part of this uh i need to get more more comfortable with the dynamics of the whole thing because i do have the ability to like understand charts better now than i did 14 months ago you know i'd like to bring things like that up uh i'd like to bring up for example maybe perhaps articles you know like wales does uh, I like to bring up uh, graphics and funny funnies and stuff like that. I, I just want to get more, you know, smooth uh, with actually running a structured show instead of per se, like, you know, we're doing now or did last night where it's just like, mm. you know, two guys talking on, on stream, sure. you know, yeah. but, but with time, with time, I think. Yeah. Well, and sometimes that's kind of like how you have to learn too, because, you know, you can, you can practice a million times, right? Like say for, for like the final, the final speech or the presentation, things like that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, it's just that final presentation or the actual stream itself that, you know, over time it gets better with each iteration because, you know, same thing that I was saying last night, like I can, you know, show you how to, how to share the screen without doxing, you know, cause there's, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. And one of them, shares like the entire window of, of what you're seeing. So, you know, the time, all of the applications, the URL, and that's the one that you don't want to do. Cause obviously there's just so much doxing information there. Oh my and, God. Um, yeah. I was really paranoid about that, Brandon, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Better not, better not to even try at least while you're on a live, then, then, you know, attempt it and, you know, accidentally uh, have to delete the stream. Cause 
you revealed information that was personal or private? Well, you know, I, I don't know. You guys are welcome to tell me what you think. Children of the grave. He, he caught it. You know, this is how professional ninja this guy is. He, he catches it in like a half of a second and gives me a, a little verbal spanking for it yesterday. But, um, you know, I did show my receipt from my 14th floor stay at the Marriott in September of the year 2000. So we're in the World Trade Center um, 51 weeks <laughs> before the, the shit went down. And it's something I had spoken to uh, whales and some fellas on one of the whales only streams about. And I said on that stream, one of these days in Hexco, when I'm streaming, I will prove to you guys that I was in the World Trade Center, you know, <clears throat> um, before the attacks, like right before the attacks. So I, I showed it yesterday and I hold it up. And of course, you know, my government's right there. Uh, there wasn't any sensitive, like, you know, card, credit card information or anything like that. I did check for that. But uh, I was kind of on, and I, I think it's a personal choice. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? But it's it's kind of up to the individual, the content creator, how much of himself he's going to let out. Like mm, totally, totally. For yep. for example, you you will get whacked if you find out maybe whale's name. <laughs> but with me. I kind of always operated under the auspices that one of these days, my, you know, what my mother and father named me will just be kind of like common knowledge. Now, a guy like you, um, unless this is all part of one really cool ploy on your part, like <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, you're Bally at brand, you're brand, Brandon yep. Bally, right? Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You know, yeah. I, I, any thoughts or input you have on that topic or. Are yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a good question. Right. Because I mean, you know, I mean, so I was born in 96 and, and same thing. You oh, see. Oh, oh my heart. <laughs> oh my God. Don't say things like that. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Okay. No, it's a uh, all perspective, but you know, <laughs> I would see videos in, in like the, the late nineties of it, it was some sort of, it wasn't like Oprah, but it was something like that where it's like hmm. kind of like a talk show thing. And they're like, you know, what is internet? You know, it's kind of like when people say like the Facebooks or the YouTubes, you know, you can just tell there's like kind of like a disconnect with, you know, the thing itself. Um, but anyways, yeah, I mean, for me, I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, obviously there's, there's, you know, bad things that can come with, with doxing of information and things like that. And, and that's why I think it's important to not only keep security tight, but yeah, you know, kind of close things off that, you know, that don't allow people to to kind of do bad things like that. But as far as all of that goes, I mean, I've always had Ballet Brand as like a, a gamer tag when I played a whole bunch of Xbox. Or, okay, I got or things you. like that. Right. And so you know, never so you really already had, had a, some experience or, in in the world of public view with you know your government. Yeah, well, and dude, I'll be honest, like because when I got into crypto in 2017. Like I'm a you know huge fan of you know operational security or just like the cipher cypherpunk movement and so it's like the the whole you know epitome and things like that was to you know kind of kind of not, you know not just be all out there in the public and, and use your real name and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I have you know Brian Jones and, and Steve Johnson at the time. But then when Hex came out, because I had a whole bunch of conviction and passion for crypto yes. when I first got into it with with Bitcoin. Same thing. It was like. 900 a thousand bucks when i bought my first bitcoin and and some of these other cryptos but it wasn't until kind of experiencing a first you know market cycle mm -hmm. so if crypto doesn't go up forever right experiencing the uh the peak and then and then it was like when hex came out that it's like you know once again rg3 hexologist those those people were the first ones that kind of started the community and then mm -hmm. after i saw them it was after like effing hangout i had seen a couple episodes with with RG3 and Epping Hangout that I was like, you know what? Like if, if this guy's doing it and Hexo's on here, which I watch every day, like, uh -huh. you know, maybe it's not too bad for me to jump on. And so- <laughs> There um, it is, folks. You heard it from yeah. the horse's mouth with uh, Bally at Brand, uh, an iconic Hexican in his own right. You know, he just saw the brothers, uh, Hexo and RG3 doing it and he got after mm -hmm. it. And they're having such a good time, dude. Like it, it reminded me of like my older brothers or I was telling Crypto Silas, like, you know, if, if you're, say if you're at a party or maybe you're not at a party, but you know, you're in a 
public area and you see, mm-hmm. a, you know, people at a park or whatever, having a whole bunch of fun and laughing and having a good time, you know, it, it piques people's curiosity. They want to be where, where the fun is. And like, you know, just like in crypto, right? People want to be where the, the mad gains are. They don't want to be where the gains are getting cuckled every single day. So now it's funny. You were bringing up, I, I think of two things. I thought of Litecoin, your time in that community. But uh, before that, I was thinking about what you said about stepping away and thinking you're off and you're not. I thought about that time that RG3 uh, took a oh, yeah. <laughs> for the entire Mexican nation to participate in uh, in listening to. <laughs> God bless you. Hey, I got yeah. to meet him. I got to meet him at um, that party that we were at, right? At, yeah, uh, Nagas. which one the Nagas? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, seeing I gotta tell you, like he and I aren't like the the tightest of um allies in this thing. He's not one of those that had the extra time or space to to get to like everybody. Uh uh, you know, kinetics, who his partner. Now he's one who really leaned into being really cool to me, welcome welcoming me in and all that. But uh, RG3, that having been said, you know, without the tightness, I still had a lot of regard for the guy. And when I finally got to meet this cat at um, Nagabo's party, Brand, I got to tell you, that was kind of surreal for me. Now, now meeting Brandon, sure, from sure. Rags, Rags to Riches, meeting you, um, you know, let me think who else Luther and his, his lovely wife, mm-hmm. uh, Paulsberg mm-hmm. meeting these folks. Yeah, she's great. This was like Marco, the hexagon. These, this, this is like meeting my brothers or my cousins. Yeah. Like it was really organic and comfortable for me, but something about, you know, I almost said his, his given name, something about RG three. Uh, it was a little surreal. And at one point I walked around the corner, right. And he's standing there. And I'm like, yo, bro. I was like, this is fucked up, man. He's like, yeah, how so? You know, he's sober. Nobody else around him is. Everybody, yeah, you know, yeah, everybody's yeah. fucked up. <laughs> how so? Um, I said, because I don't know. I spent the last year watching you on TV. And here you yeah. are standing right in front of me. Now the, the, the mm-hmm. same could be said for all you guys, right? But for some reason mm-hmm. with RG3, uh, I don't know. He's more iconic, I guess, or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But it was really, really yeah. surreal. One of those moments where you're like, it's almost similar to the feeling of deja vu, but it's a different yeah, thing. Yeah. And you're like, he's here like right now. And I'm used to that guy being on a screen. Freaky. Although I was sleep deprived, RG three. So maybe it's just <laughs> <laughs> hallucination. Yeah. No, dude. It 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 happens, man. Because like, uh, I mean, yeah. After following Richard for over over five years and things <sighs> like that, I I still haven't met him. You know. Right. And and I wanted to go uh, to the to the hex seven thirty one, but like same thing. I mean, I I'm just not going to compromise. Do you mean on, do you mean the uh, hex uh, seven forty one? <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i want one of those shirts i gotta get ken to give me one of those shirts i love a good satire man i love a good oh uh, yeah dude well that's the thing too is like um yeah you know so many so many great moments and and that was kind of like the the same surreal experience that i had at the at the first conference that that was that was happening was that you know big kurkowski had a party as well and it was just really cool to meet all the people that same thing I had seen or that I had streamed with, you know, RG3 and all these other people. And it, it's cool, man. This community is, you know, it really is the definition of grassroots, man. And and when you've got so much of the gatekeeping that we've faced, so much of the uh, the FUD, the fear, uncertainty and doubt, it's, uh, you know, it, it's really, you know, you mentioned like Phalanx Shield and things like that. It really has, oh, yeah. you know, it's kind of like a like a, a welding bond. You know, it's it's bonded us together and uh, through thick and thin. Man, you know my little, uh, you know my pseudo haiku, man. I was I was motivated. I was spiritually on fire when that those words came to me. You know, and I believe them. So thanks for bringing up the Phalanx. But it, it's oh, at yeah. these, it's at these times, Brand. See, I'm I'm Libran not only in sign, you know, an air sign, I'm a fire air kind of guy, I guess it's obvious, you know, but I'm mm-hmm. a justice uh, seeker. And mm-hmm. when I now feel like I am part of this community 
and I'm hypersensitive to attack. You know, in fact, this is an important conversation that once my reputation in the in the show develop, you know, I'm going to cross that bridge. I want to talk openly about these things because to me, there are vectors. Okay, first off, let's start with the product in the community. Okay, are not just like hated by haters. It's considered a threat on some levels. So if you can see that and admit that, it logically follows, responsible logic follows that there will be attack vectors in the community. So once you've identified the attack vectors as they exist in the community, and believe me, they're, you know, as well as I do, they're multifaceted. You start to get that thing like, my people like are unjustly being attacked. It's not just me that's being attacked. It's like my Fearless leader, okay, my brother who helped to change my life, Richard Hart, is being attacked. My brother, like Bran, you know what I'm saying? Like my brothers across the entire ecosphere are being attacked. That does not sit well with me. Like I want to be part of the effort, okay? And this isn't even for me. This isn't like a I'm Manchester United and your Arsenal motherfucker type of thing. Like that's how we get in crypto. Like the Litecoin guys got their little jerseys on and the Hex guys got their jerseys and we're going to, it ain't like that. It's like we're operating from a position, okay, of decency, righteousness, truth-telling, research, freedom, but with responsibility. These are all attributes I want to, I'll die for. So if I hear a motherfucker coming uncorrect, I'm going to take umbrage with that. So I'm thinking um, hexagons, hexagons. Yeah, man, hexagons. Lock shields, rock yields, and fight in mad shade. <laughs> no, it it's was, true, man. It was accurate. I mean, and anything that's ever really been, and, and like you had said previously, but that's been, you know, revolutionary, whether it's the, uh, the internet or or cryptography in general, right? Like, uh -huh. um, you know, not wanting the average citizen and things like that to to be able to have cryptography when when in reality it's like part of the the right to privacy and things. There's always going to be pushback and, and blowback and and uh, and challenges that are that are faced. You know. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Now these boys are saying that you're you got some. Uh... Blang, blang oh. on the old pimp hand. <laughs> Some weight now I'm here. What's well, this, uh, what's this all so, about? <laughs> I'm a copycat. <laughs> uh, so right. one of the hexagons, right? So one of the hexagons, um, I think it was, yeah, I don't know what his name is right off bat, but he uh, he had posted this ring that he had had customly done. And it's just like a, a little black hexagon and, you know, kind of got a little pyramid structure, but uh, I don't know if you can kind of see, but so that side is the uh, the little hex. You know, mm -hmm. you can see the little hex right there. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, <laughs> the other one, I kind of have to like break Ooh, my finger for you to see it, but it's it's a pulse chain logo on yeah. the other side. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a pulse chain logo on the other side. I mean, uh, you should be able to kind of kind kind of be able. I don't know. You, you can kind of see there's there's a pulse on one side, a hex on the other, and then yeah, I totally. <laughs> You know, Richard, I always thought his rings were were cool. And, and I've never, you know, I'm not, you know, believe me, I'm not going to be one of the guys that's like low and stupid money on on things like it. But but I thought the rings were cool. And I remember right. him saying they were made by like Thomas Sabo or, you know, things like that. And so, so yeah, I got the same skull ring that he's got uh, once again, you know, kind of just copying I love the good it, taste. Dude, I don't think then, it's, uh, yeah, I don't think it's cheesy at all. I think it works. Yeah. Well, dude, and, and I mean, I don't know, like, once again, uh, a lot of people, they like, they compliment it or they like it and they're like, oh, hey, you know, so I guess it's just kind of like another conversation starter, but, you know, that right. kind of leads me into like, hey, you know, you know, my billionaire friend, I, I just copied him, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so Why not? not many people have, uh, you know, people that they know they're actual billionaires, so Do especially self-made, I think that's cool. Yes, I agree with you, man. Why not? You know, why not emulate it? I'm like you. I can't go in, like, I can't see myself going in for the suitcases and the hamburger and the Dolce Gabbana and the Gucci. Da, 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 da. Now, however, I yeah. could see myself, you know, if everything else and everybody else is taken care of, I could see myself, you know, dropping a little bit of coin on maybe one 
vanity piece you know i mean yeah, you see how totally. you see how easy i am to please i got some cedar tree beads right here oh cool nice dude. you know yeah. but i would like um i want one hex pulse piece that mm -hmm. somebody looks at it and they're like i'll be like you didn't oh you didn't know and they'll be like oh shit like <laughs> that is something to take extremely seriously dude <laughs> yeah yeah well no richard his uh you know, his first super successful company, um, I don't even know what it's called right off bat, but the one where he's got, you know, talk about Super Gotti, where he's got like the fist crushing money logo. Uh -huh. And I always remember <laughs> seeing that and being like, dude, that is super badass. And then that reminded me of the Hunter Thompson peyote fist. I, you know, I don't, I don't know, know what that is. Let me see. It. Let's see. Hunter. Thompson. It's the two thumbed, the double thumbed. With the peyote button. Oh yeah, yeah, it. that's exactly right. Yeah, it, you know, yeah, exactly. And the dagger and, is um, the wrist. Yeah. Well, you know, and and dude, same thing. Like, I'm such a plain Jane dude. Where like, you know, even these, you know, ten or twelve dollar shirts on Amazon or hexmerch.com. You yeah. know, like I don't, I don't really need expensive stuff at all. Nor do I really want it. You know, Richard mentioned uh, the the interview that he had most recently done with the the guy from the highest of stakes. Uh, I forget what he had said. I didn't catch that one lines. yet. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I got to do that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he had mentioned something al along the lines of like Richard's favorite shirt is like three for ten. You know, some sort of Hanes, right. some sort of Hanes shirt. And like, you know, and 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 it's funny too because like I remember uh, you know Papa B talking a long time ago in the in the chats when Richard's wearing the the Louis Vuitton thing that it's like it's not actual leather. It's it's painted or it's uh. You know, it's canvas pretty much is what it is. And mm -hmm. anyway, so it's interesting how how society and how the world itself through like trends kind of, you know, says that things are valuable because it is the social consensus. You know, you've got people like Richard blowing stupid money on on watches that he doesn't even wind or these things, but, but yeah. they work and they get the attention. So, right, right. Yeah, it's like it is relative and you know, let's say some shit goes down, which is not entirely out of the realm of possibility. You can't get a glass of clean water for your children to drink. Guess how valuable that fill in the blank becomes, yeah. right? I mean, mm -hmm. it'd be in a second, be without question. And I'm not dissing it because like I said, I want to get like eventually get a piece myself, but that's after i have the uh land it's after i have everybody i care about divested you know or living in proper status that's after i have my cache of weaponry that's after i have a food <laughs> source that's yeah. after i have an energy source after i yeah. have a, a spring you know because water you know is just yeah just, vital oh my god these are all the things that i will be you know uh thinking about and my like-minded um uh brothers and sisters that, that i'm affiliated with that's the things that we'll be thinking about so if you ever see uh me or my immediate family or tribe sporting something that's entirely a vanity piece i think you'll be able to say to yourself hey yeah. false child arrived he got everything yeah. done off his list <laughs> yeah well yeah it, it's important you're totally right about that like it's it's important to distinguish a want versus a need and mm -hmm. um and and yeah you know you're right what what good and richard talked about that and even in his debate with peter schiff like they talk about in in times of war <laughs> i mean people aren't going to give a shit about gold you know they're not gonna you know you you'd see this thing with gold where it's like oh you can you can bite it off or you can kind of like snap this thing <laughs> off and and like who, who you know once again something is only as va is uh as valuable as what the like the social consensus is with that right. so i mean especially in that kind of scenario that you mentioned you know i, th I think i think freedom seeds would be a lot more valuable um but anyways yeah it's kind of important to like you mentioned get some of the the basis covered before uh -huh. you uh you know get stuff that's just useless well we have um um sister 1s in the chat and she's the one who enlightened me to um a value for these precious uh metals and i think you know we'd be talking like um platinum silver gold um what's the other one is it palladium mm -hmm. um but these are you know especially silver uh and to a lesser extent i think gold or maybe i have that switched you in order to do certain functions in the process 
of extricating yourself from the corporation and grabbing back your your private law status, which will ultimately result in you reclaiming your uh, sovereign, autonomous, free but responsible status as you know your own. You know, you belong to yourself and your creator, the essence of the creator of the universe, however you choose to see it. You belong to that instead of this fucking labyrinth of machinations that they've constructed around uh, commodification of the individual. And she, she, she was showing me quite logically how, you know, in order to close the deal, okay, on some of these transactions, you literally need to... Um, to give that officer, for example, of the court, uh, so many grams of like gold or silver. My mind was like fucking blown by that shit. I had, I had no idea. Yeah. I've, I've never heard of that either, but you know, Hey, it, it's cool that we've got a, a community that's constantly educating people and, and, uh, you know, whether well, it's different opinions or things there, like there, that, she, you know, she, she just, um, said a little something about it. I think she sees it as having transactive value, okay, when the tribes are out there trading and bartering and, and conducting business, you know, if we ever were to have some kind of reset or collapse. But there she, to, 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 to the point that I was making, um, also ultimately for lawful divestment. We might have to uh, expound on that because I think um, 1S, 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 we would all in this community in particular like to learn these things you know we're an education hungry community and the shit like that you know be it real we want to we want to know about it what do you say Brian? yeah i know it's important man you know yeah. there's a you know because uh you know i i kind of have this the same thing where you try i try to do like everything by myself and then it's like you know then you might not want to delegate things to other people because how do you know if it can be done the right way or not but uh. You, you can't learn everything all at once. I mean, other people have to be uh, experts in their area and you, know, you need to be able to learn from those people too. And that's what Richard says is like, you know, f focus on a handful of things that you can be good at versus trying to be mildly good at a whole bunch of things. Well, it's a great point. I'm probably guilty of being the polymath, trying to be the Renaissance man a little bit. But then again, that could just be a, a, an elaborate excuse for my raging ADHD, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, what's the OTT saying? I think he was talking. He didn't like the last stanza. Fighting mad shade. I'm going to use a term like mad because, you know, I'm a hip hop generation kid. And mad is, a to me, the phrasing, it fit the rhythm to have a one syllable word there. So I could possibly replace mad shade with, it would have to be like for the rhythm of the way I want it to work out, it would have to be one syllable. So cray shade, something like that. But then shade, as you know, would be the double entendre of from the story 300, you know, when they're under their shields and the arrows are falling and Classic, most people dude. would be shitting. Yeah. Most people would be shitting yeah, a brick. Yeah. These warriors are like a fight in the shade. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, dude. So I, I said that. like people out in the press, people out in social media are throwing shade on fucking mm -hmm. Hexaco. So I, I, that's what I thought was cool. Mm. C O T G. Yeah, no, that's that's true, man. Uh, I actually just watched that movie the other day, which uh, which mm -hmm. I thought was funny that you kind of brought that up because actually, so so there's a Tonto Nomani who goes by like Dipcatcher. And then uh, wait, this is the well, guy who it, developed Maximus. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So hi, hi, him and his buddy uh, Gold Key. Gold Key. Um, so they were right. kind of talking about, um, you know, they were doing a Maxi stream the other day. Divcatcher was, and and okay. he was playing a scene. I forget what kind of giveaway he was doing. It was for some sort of Maxi input. But anyways, after the giveaway was done, he played like a scene from the movie Gladiator, and uh -huh. and I thought to myself because that movie came out in like '92. And, you know, once again, I was born in 96. And I remember seeing that movie like once when I was a kid, but I'm uh, not a huge movie guy, to be honest. Yes, and, and when I am, it's memorable. It's because I remembered something. So mm -hmm. long story short, I watched that movie uh, fully, you know, for the first time as an adult the other day. And damn, dude, that's a good movie, you know, because I always remember the, the meme where it's like, are you not entertained? You know, and he's looking at the, oh, the right. crowd. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's a good movie and, and it's got like a lot of, uh, successful principles that I think have stood the test of time.
Yeah, I. Hmm. First off, I think 300 for me, this is only my opinion and I, everybody's entitled to theirs. It's art. I'm an artist. You know, you, it's like, there's no accounting for taste. I couldn't do gladiator the way I could do 300. The reason being mm -hmm. 300 was coming out of the gate, admitting that it's a comic book version of a story. I mean, let's look at it, right? Look at, um, Oh God, frick. Um, 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 the Persian king. God, why? Well, I'm like a historian and I can't even remember simple shit. Oh, good, dude. It happens when you're streaming. What's the, what's the Persian king's name? They have him as like a 13 foot person. So, right out of the gate, you know that 300 is like comic book a little bit. Whereas Gladiator for me almost postulates itself. Xerxes? Xerxes. Thank you very much. And his dad. I that, yeah. His dad began with an H because I knew the whole lineage. Like Charlemagne, his dad was Pepin. Like I'll, I know this weird shit like that. But um, um, you know, it was almost like Gladiator was in a really kind of sly way saying to dumb, impressionable people, "We're showing you history here," and I'm like, "Fuck what?" Like I was, I had a really big problem with the um cavalry charge against the quote unquote bar Germanic barbarian line. I guess that was supposed to be in Gaul. Like I know things about like these readings of history. So it, it can ruin things for you, you know? Um, now if I can compartmentalize it successfully, like I did with say James Bond growing up, you know what I mean? I'm just like, that's fucking entertainment, dude. Let it go. You know what I mean? I think it's like the slippery slope that we're on in society where people are just so fucking uneducated and fucking dumb and yeah, fucking that's true. willfully ignorant that I allow myself to get bothered by it because it's hard mm. to live in a world where you're surrounded by people who, for example, will think that gladiator is an accurate retelling of history. You know, and I know that I, I, I'm Libran, so I see both sides. You know what I mean? I see the escapism, the fun, the cool. I do see that and the value in it. But then you have this part of thoughts child that gets all rankled <laughs> by it. So it's a tortured life. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. <laughs> hey, uh, COTG yeah. says uh, you could smash somebody's face <laughs> with your rings. Probably Might as well be brass knuckles, except with some spikes on it, right? The little well, falcon like beak. Pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty you know? design, you know? You'll, like, tag somebody and have a real pretty <laughs> pulse uh, right there. <laughs> except I wouldn't want to do that because then it would be a unique identifier, you know? Like, oh, the guy with the, the skull <laughs> ring. Oh, you know, if I can throw it in the ocean. <laughs> Children of the grave. No, but... Some nice suits and a couple watches. You're right about... Um, and I always felt this way as, as a kid too, like growing up in school and things like that. And I'm grateful to have had like uh, a computer in my room and uh, since third grade. And obviously like now we've got laptops and stuff and, and like, you know, LCD screens, you know, thin screens and stuff, but the computer in my room, literally the monitor was probably like 50 pounds and it was probably <laughs> like, like the frame's not even big enough for me to, to show how, you know, big the monitor itself was. But anyways, the thing I wanted to say is, um, you know, you're totally right where, I mean, especially in crypto, we're, we're such a minority compared to the rest of the world or other investments. And, mm -hmm. and most people just really have not caught on to things in general. I mean, most people, they, they like watching, uh, like, like celebrity TV shows and all these different flicks, uh, and they, and they might not focus on like things that can actually benefit them, you know? So when right. people see other people that are successful and they kind of come from that paradigm, you know, they, they feel like maybe it wasn't earned, but in reality, the, the people that earned it just chose to do different things. Right. Yeah. There's a rub to that, man. And, and I, I'm as guilty as anybody for as principled as I try to be this, this projection of judgment, is it not one of the hardest things, you know, for the human species to, to try and get around? Cause we think we know, but we don't really know unless we know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, well, most people, um, I mean, you see this in crypto a lot where, or just in, in general, where, where people's kind of egos get in the way, but where someone would rather stay wrong than, oh, yeah, they would rather absolutely. stay wrong than absolutely. to admit, 
the other person was right. And it's like, dude, you know, when the heck are you going to realize like we're fighting the same battle? You know, I share this, like Richard says it with, with, with Bitcoiners or things like that, where a lot of them share the same uh, initial ideals that a lot of these people talk about, but right. they, you know, they just can't see because they've got, you know, like a complex or, or a paradigm in their way that's blocking judgment. That dude, case in point, I'll fucking say it. These BTC, this BTC community. I mean, I think we really got a really good idea what cognitive dissonance looked like boots on the ground after 9-11. And then um, um, as we're, we're going through this, uh, <coughs> and, you know, like cognitive dissonance, you like literally can show people scientific facts. You can show them charts. Oh, now here's a real human being in front of you who will testify. And they're just like, <laughs> like, dude, man, you yep. like really, really? <laughs> that's like, okay. Yeah. And that's where I feel like we're at with BTC Maxis. Now I got to fucking give some props to my boy rags to riches, Brandon, who for our other great Brandon in this community, he oh, yeah, fucking dude, destroyed BTC Maxis last Friday, guys. If you guys haven't oh, really? seen Where's After that? Dark, I know it's hard because we're really like Brandon, like our Brandon here tonight has said, um, it's we're getting a log jam of good content. It's a good problem to have, but you know, the side effect is you're just never going to be able to catch everything. So that's the reason why I'm specifically bringing up Rags to Riches After Dark. Um, the Friday episode was a line in the sand for our whole community. Okay. I would place that line in the sand drawn by Rags to Riches Brandon right behind Richards. Okay. Richard drew the first line right behind him. Brandon, bam, done. Enough said. I don't even need to fucking add to the argument. The only place I will accept any more input on the fucking topic is naturally from Wales and, uh, and Jay and their macros. Other than that, um, these people are buck toothed, sister fucking mulleted motards, dude. I just, I, I, I f almost feel bad, but I don't. <laughs> so I I didn't see that one because he's actually been pumping out a whole bunch of content. Holy shit, and, and dude. Same thing. But so did he have like a BT, BTC Maxi on, on his stream or something? Or No, what he was doing, uh, he was coming out of a bag of, uh, let me see, he was in a Twitter space is what it was. And he goes ahead and relates the story with verifiable witnesses because that's that's our boy Rags, man. Yep, um, yep. I love, have you seen, not to go off too far, but have you seen yeah. when he interviews these new project guys and they claim to be hexagons and what's rags say to them right away? Would you be willing to verify, you know, <laughs> that address, you know, so that they, yeah, so yeah, that we, yeah. we could see if these Prove guys are the really telling the truth because people mm. spread lies so casually. I mean, yeah. you imagine getting That's caught true. on it by rags dude oh shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. well dude it, it's just like you and i both know that it's just like um you know an rg3 had said it uh i mean as far as like the, the way that we have the internet versus in person but it's just like someone that talks a whole bunch of shit that's like never been in a fight you know and then all of a sudden yeah land is the utter, utter there it is importance. right there boys and girls here it is sorry brandon <laughs> Oh, uh, just, just to, to the point that, yeah, you know, someone thinks that they're all tough until, you know, even Mike Tyson said it, you know, you think you're all tough until, you know, you kind of go head to head and get punched in the nose or punched in the face. And all of a sudden, you know, your vision's blurring or your nose just starts gushing. And then it's like, <sighs> oh shit, you know, like, right. you know, what my previous right. paradigm of being able to type behind a keyboard is, is not actually the way that reality works. Um, <laughs> right. You know? The keyboard warrior. Oh, I love it. Mm. Well, dude, I, I think I think what you mentioned too, because I'm a I'm a huge firm believer of that as well. I mean, I don't care if it's you know family, a significant other, uh, some person on the internet. Like, yeah, if they say something, uh, for, for me, it's always just been like honesty has always been a policy. So mm -hmm. if someone wanted to call me on something, I would be able to you know back it up and, and kind of recite that. And so I think that's important to have is skepticism, right? Because you know. Uh, We've, we've healthy, you know, healthy you mentioned, system. yeah, 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 because we got to where we were at by by verifying what Richards talked about with the 
the audited code, it's complete, no admin keys, things like that. That's all verifiable, but right. you know, anyone can really say anything that they want. And unfortunately, if a community or group of people is too accepting or too gullible, um, you know, yeah, <sighs> you can find yourself in some muddy waters. I mean, it, oh, it happens, God. you know, so you have oh, to have yeah. discernment and like to the point where Motley Investor, he's talked about it where, you know, he's been slighted so many times that he had said, you know, he had mentioned this on maybe a couple months ago stream where, you know, where he's almost jaded to the point and not necessarily jaded, but you're almost like skeptical from the very beginning. And, and I think that's kind of how people should be in general, because for me, like, I don't care what someone's telling me, like they should, they should prove it for me to believe them. And then you kind of have, you know, like a, a ground to stand on for the relationship. And but you are a wonderful, no wonderful synthesis of that young man. You really, really are dude, because I know you are authentically, genuinely a sweet, loving, kind, caring person, like holistically, but you're not one of those types that's a fucking pushover. <laughs> yeah, it's like a exactly. wonderful, you yeah. know, it's the way to be. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I sometimes find myself um, um, truly aspiring to be a little bit more like you in some ways, kiddo, because uh, I don't know whether it was my time on the Philly streets or what, but I can be a snapdragon for go get fucked. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I, I just, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I mean, you and I both know that like, no matter how, how much of a, you know, good amount of patience someone has or a temperament, I mean, life is always throwing, you know, oh, you think you're ready for this? Let me throw a challenge in your, oh, in your you know, oh, like, testify. let me throw a challenge over here. Oh, yeah. Man. Let's test how, how, how ready you think you are for something. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a culmination of those kind of events kind of lead to people. Man, well, well said. Hey, Bran, um, do you have a little bit more time to spend with us yet? I know that, you know. You yeah, man. Your, yeah. Okay, good. Totally I have a did, couple yeah. questions for you. I wanted to, for a moment, circle back on something that you said uh, that I caught. You said you had the uh, device in your own bedroom from a very young age. I found that to be oh, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you go ahead and then say, uh, who was it, mama or dad or older brother, uh, them making sure that you had access to that definitely could be logged as a, you know, uh, one of the credentials for why you were yeah. in the right place at the right time and yeah. did the right things. No, yeah, I, I think my, uh, yeah, is my dad. So like, I think my dad, right. because, you know, he, he had, you know, IT jobs and, and he, mm -hmm. he did real estate too. Um, but, you know, yeah, kind of off and on things like that. He, he's, you know, worked some like internet technology sales jobs and, and I always thought that that was really cool. And, you know, I saw it for, for what it was where like, mm -hmm. you know, and whether you're watching a movie or whether, you know, just like we had with the Xerxes thing in 300, like, oh yeah, what's the name of that thing? Like, imagine it's so crazy that we live in a paradigm now where like any question you freaking have, you can literally have answered from this little, you know, glass device in your pocket. And so long right. story short, I, you know, I, I quickly, I mean, yeah, similar to Richard, I had like a gaming addiction. I mean, I gamed for about 10 years too and, and crippling to the point where that's all I was doing and and you know, screw homework and all this stuff. I'm just gonna <laughs> play these video games instead. Right. But um, but yeah, like I, I always liked the aspect that for me, I never liked being taught by by teachers because it's like, well, they're just reading from a fucking book. And like, yeah, why don't I I'm just not listen to them? Unless I can relate to them, why don't I just not listen to them? And why don't you give me the book so I can teach myself? Because I know the way that I learn best. And so that's kind of what the internet was for me. And honestly, that's why. Yeah, I mean, I was an early adopter in like, you know, I've had Twitter since like 2008, uh, YouTube since before Alphabet bought them out, uh -huh. things like this. And it's because, you know, I wanted to find those places where where you can teach yourself and learn. And anyways, the Internet's awesome. Yeah, it's a huge contributor to where I'm at today because, you know, in, in, in you know, many ways, the, the parents were were sheltering, uh, you know, sheltering in, in other ways. Um, but I'm glad mm -hmm. that. Okay. I had that ability. And so I kind of just had the discernment that like, okay, hey, you know, your your knowledge is really all you kind of have, your facts, logic, and wisdom. Very nice. I kind of have a follow-up on it, but I really quick need to acknowledge this from 20 minutes ago. I don't know. Finn, dudes, are you using the same link as last night? 
Uh, I don't understand. How is that manifesting itself out in the world? We're on YouTube. Uh, my guest is here. Should be a different link. Yeah, I, I don't. Because with each stream, it, it uh, StreamYard generates a, a different link. So sure. you should just yeah. be able to. Uh, well, you got here. To join, so you it's be able proof to... that I used the yeah. right link because you got here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Um, if, if you want, I can forward it over to him. It sounds like he wants to. That would be great. And I would. Let me do that real quick here. I here. would. Um, oh, he wants to guest up. Is that what he's saying? It sounds like he's trying to join from, from the. From the question of are you using the same link? Uh, so Finbear, oh, well, if, if you want, I would kind of like, if possible, I need until at least two o'clock, uh, just me and Bran, and then I'll be happy to open it up. Uh, after oh, yeah, two a.m., yeah. which is in eighteen minutes. Uh, cool. Yeah, friend. that kind of works for me to. Uh, okay. To kind of dip out. Very too. good. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I really appreciate it, Finn. Um, so then. You know, we do have some really uh, concise and valuable quotes here from 1S we might look at next. And I have some things here specifically for Brand too. But first, I need to ask my follow-up question then. So um, a lot of us know your story then, um, you know, Pacific Northwest, uh, salt of the earth family, you know, you're playing football, but you're not really feeling like a football kid. The, exactly. the dynamic that I've always gathered from you is, man, it's this it's this uh, relationship with a tribe that you have that just so happens to all live under the same roof. roof and that is yep, yep. the Balliot Brothers, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a wild kind of cool thing. I was an eldest of uh, three myself, and I just had a brother and a sister. And I love them to death, but we were never like super close. And when I hear yeah. you talk about the dynamic of your family, I find that to be really interesting. So, Bran, mm. were you kind of like um, the brilliant, like tech savvy little brother? And did everybody come to you with their questions? Like, like how do I get on the network or something? Like, were you the one answering that or was it one of your uh, older brothers? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's an interesting question because, because, yeah, I am super grateful, you know, for, for our parents, like. Uh, yeah, bringing us closer together as brothers and like, you know, because, you know, yeah, having three older brothers, I was was more close growing up with the one that was just a little bit older than me. And then same thing with the oldest and the other. Um, as far as like, you know, kind of one person that that would go to the tech and stuff. Uh, really, I mean, a lot of us would just go to our uh, my dad, you know, because I mean, you know, you might be on like a, you know, uh, website and, and get, you know, get a virus back in the day and like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, dad, I need your help. You know, so. Did you ever have uh, any un uncomfortable moments like, uh, dad, what is this I just found on the internet? Well, son, that's called DP. <laughs> and I don't know if you're ready for it just yet. Uh, I, I, found that all, I found that all by myself without. <laughs> and kept I didn't need no explanations, you know. That's that's one of the things of, of having older brothers, right? Is I was like, going to say, you know. what's that brother right above you? His name, you're like, uh. Jimmy, what's that? What's his thing in her pudding for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, um, I'm not like a, I wasn't a Napster guy, like, cause that was before my time, but we had like LimeWire and things like that, oh, you know, and now that. obviously yeah. you've got torrenting and things, um, you know, um, but, but yeah, no, it's, it's so, it's so cool that, uh, one, you know, one network itself or just the internet itself can be, can be so broad what, what it can do, you know, transactions or, uh, cryptocurrency as we see now, but there's all of the the different uses because uh, everyone it's you know it's really got something for everyone whether people want to zone out and have their little oculus thing or you know mm -hmm. the the goggles and stuff like that or or whether people want to you know i know i know you're really like self-taught and you know very like uh I don't know. You're, you know, constantly trying to get answers to questions that you have. Like that's kind of the person that I am is I was always a very, and still am, you know, a curious person. And I always had like a, yeah, a curiosity that was just never really satisfied. And so I like yeah, the idea man. of like, Hey, you know, I didn't like my first car, I couldn't afford anything else to, to work on the car. Or if a part broke, like you mentioned with the shoestring, you know, I didn't have a shoestring, <laughs> right. but you know, I learned how to like replace my motor mounts in, in my first car and things like that. Thanks to the internet. And also thanks to Pretty cool. uh, having no other option. <laughs> I think that's awesome, bro. Yeah. I mean, you, you went out and you got it and it was available to you and you fucking got it. I think that's so cool. 
Um, you know, you made me think of something. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I'm completely blown away and enamored um, by my own children. Like, yeah, there awesome. is no way a fuck up like me has done such a good job. Every that's so cool teacher that I ever talked to is like, this is the most special student I've had in 15, 20, 30 years of teaching. I, I've heard that three out of four times yet. And the only reason that I haven't heard it four times is because the little guy didn't start school yet. So, <laughs> you nice, know, I joke, dude. people are like, that's how awesome. are the kids? I say, well, there's still 10 fingers and 10 toes. So I'm doing something <laughs> right. But, you know, and the truth of the matter is they're exceptional. Now, my eldest. Oh, guys, I don't really know how to even start. Imagine like a looker like Brad Pitt, who, who could knock you on your ass, but has the heart of like Bally at Brand and the Buddha had a baby. <laughs> That's my <laughs> eldest son, dude. Okay. Now I get this boy um, who has the name of like a great king who may or may not have walked the face of the earth. But, you know, I knew what I was doing with this kid's naming. I knew what I was doing with all their namings. Now this boy was um, receiving, he, he's, he's been this wonderful synthesis, my, my firstborn child, the, the alpha leader of mm -hmm. a really outdoorsy kid, okay, who can find lunch out in the eastern, you know, woods. And I'm yeah. being serious now. He can build yeah. structures. Uh, he can make all manner of tools and weapons. He can identify nice. all these species of different things. But he'll kick my ass 99 times out of 100 at Super Mario Kart. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, he, yeah. and then he got on Steam. So all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, he's learning about these games and stuff. Like, I'm like, whoa, this kid's a gamer on top of it. Now, the reason you made me think of him is you brought up like Oculus and the VR. Shit. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> and and I was really worried about this. I'm worried about like kind of reprogramming of brain synapses and and and, and subliminal messaging and things of this nature. Totally. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, this boy, okay, he gets these, he gets the, finally gets these uh, goggles, right? And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm mourning this because I'm like, I'm going to lose a part of my son. Well, guess what? I'm proud to report that he went through about six weeks where they were on for maybe two hours a day if he got the time, you know, to do it. And now uh, he's literally not even picking them up and putting them on. Nine times out of 10, the kid would rather go outside in the woods. And I'm just like, whoa, this is fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to bottle this, folks. So if you're having problems with your own kid, I'd love to help. But I don't know what to do. I'm just blessed. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Well, dude, Ooh, in, in like... I've I've noticed just a common theme and and you know reoccurrence and, and problem to be honest with I mean yeah you want to talk about parenting because because same thing we always got compliments of uh, you know oh you know the Ballyette boys you know they're always so well behaved and, and right. well mannered and I think a lot of that comes from the parents right like it's just like what Motley has said about um, and, and same thing with with uh, Jack you know Jack Mills and things like that and her husband Jay where. Like it's like the pit bull uh, stereotype where you know oh you know uh, everyone thinks like the the pit bull is gonna uh, tear someone's face up and things like this but it really <laughs> right. is kind of how you know how how you're led and, and guided and, and teach and and also having th discernment I mean obviously uh, you know nature plays its you know act too but mm -hmm. anyways no that's really cool with your kids I mean the, the thing that I was gonna say with the parenting thing is it's disgusting that uh, we we kind of just have like a a society that not only is everything like instant gratification, but for, for parents, like if their, their kid is screaming or things like that, instead of them figuring out like what they need, I've seen often where like the mom or the dad just takes their phone and they shove it in the kid, you know, they shove it in the kid's hands. Oh, and then the kid's yeah. just like, Oh, okay. We've all like, had to you, do that. Yeah. We've all had to do yeah. that. Yeah. No, it's true. But I was, I just said all that to say that you'd mentioned with your kid because like, mm -hmm. you know, other other kids that might have had that same experience of, hey, little kid, here's like a, an Oculus, like they might never leave the house because they're so enamored <laughs> by by all of it, you know, so you kind of have all sides of the spectrum. But that's really sure. cool, man. I can only imagine how, uh, you know, proud and things like that you you feel to 
to not only have your lineage and things like that, but, you know, to be able to, you know, like you mentioned, you know, uh, you know, 10, 10 fingers and, and 10 toes, like, even though we played football and, you know, had a, like, you know, you know everyone's had their bell rung a couple of times, you know, <laughs> right. but never really had any major broken bones and things like this. And we, what? we trampoline, what? like, <laughs> yeah, we, we roughhoused all the time and, you know, some sprains here and there, but never like clean breaks and stuff. And anyways, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. I can only imagine the, you know, the satisfaction, I guess, that comes from, from having, you know, your lineage. I appreciate you saying that, my man. I mean, you, you're one of these personalities who I actually would have no problem leaving my child alone in a room with you. And that that's saying yeah. something because yeah. I think my kids have been babysat by somebody who wasn't a uh, direct sure. family uh, this many mm -hmm. times in their entire yeah. lives. So uh, yep, yep. Yeah, it's I mean, that hands-on parenting. In my generation, now I don't know what it was like for yours, but in my generation – Everybody got touched as a kid. I mean, it's really fucked up, dude. It's like a pandemic in its yeah, own right. Yeah. People between a yeah, certain yeah, age true. were fucking molested. Um, in my yeah. generation now with the children, nobody's kids got molested because, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like, we'll kill, I'll fucking kill you first off. And second off, I'm vigilant. Yeah. You know, I'm vigilant. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's important, know. man. Yeah. Kids are innocent, you know, and you have to protect them. I mean, you know, they're the future. Like, it's the yeah. only thing that could change me, Bran. It's the only yeah. thing. I, that's why I said before, I really admire you folks out here who are able to get a clue without having had to become a parent. Because I stayed a fucking ne'er-do-well kind of dickhead from the age of 17 until 37. <laughs> you know that's like fuck man i was like i stayed 21 till i was 37 i tell people and um yeah yeah, yeah. you can get it together and realize some things about your endogenous levels of selfishness and how that's really not what's up uh in a good in a good full life you've accomplished you know something um so that's that's kind of cool man I, I feel like you're one of those cats that might have stumbled on that um <laughs> by yourself at a very early age mm. well dude yeah just like growing up like you know you you see as a kid like i saw what what i you know just like with anything in life like nothing is perfect but but i saw certain things that that i liked like it's just like with you know parenting or anything like that like you know i'm grateful for my parents for certain things you know obviously no parent is uh is perfect and so you kind of right. just have to uh you know uh like chew on the meat spit out the bone type of deal and anyways i'm a firm believer even though i've learned a lot of things and had to do a lot of things like on my own and and make a lot of fuck ups myself um i've also had the you know thankfully like the foresight to be able to learn from you know whether it was a friend or a brother or my parents experiences you know be able to kind of see and know what they they went through uh with whatever the thing was and then you know, be able to learn from that without having to learn every single lesson by myself. And, and that's something that I'm grateful for, you know? Yeah. Well, recognizing it and being grateful for it. You know, a lot of people look a gift horse into the mouth and then will strut around the Terra as if uh, they're entitled, you know? So to be able to draw yourself back from it, see the forest for the trees, say, I'm blessed, you know? Um, yeah. You Thing, man really beautiful thing in fact so beautiful that i think uh Ballet brand has earned the thoth child flame emoji that's <laughs> <my> shit brother <laughs> I love you i love it dude mind spray um i like it you my friend uh moving on i have found you to be a uh educated responsible uh gun owner which makes me in my mind think like that's a guy I want in my militia. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Fran, can you, can you talk to us about that at all at, while I show you uh, my latest family purchase? I'm really proud of this. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the bug assault, but <laughs> is the gun I've seen this, yeah. common house fly with. <laughs> And salt, right? And salt. And this is number three. Uh, so nice. one and two, um, you know, 
we're, we're pretty big tits, but you know, here we have a uh, uh, number three and this thing, um, it works guys. Everybody. I, I got to tell you, if you got a house fly uh, problem and it shreds mosquitoes pretty effectively too, mm -hmm. um, this bug assault, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, oh, it's already ready to go. So you just, <laughs> you just kind of put your, that's, as you can see, like, what am I doing? Jackass putting expensive pink Himalayan sea salt. Right, right, right. <laughs> what an idiot. Like, I'm supposed to get some Mortons for 79 cents. Yeah, table salt. That's all I had. It's all I had. What an idiot, you know. At least you but, got um, quality salt. Most people don't. Yeah. Well, I stock up. Like, I buy, because I got four kids, whenever the opportunity yeah. presents itself, I try to save uh, you know, by buying in bulk. So I'll just get mm -hmm. stupid. Plus I'm one of the people that just thinks collapse is coming. So we better have like lots of shit. Yeah. Reserved. yeah. But, um, this is interesting, Brand. I thought you might appreciate this. I was wondering if maybe you would agree that maybe they should start putting this on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On regular guns. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, yeah. I mean, you, you ask, like, where does the affinity come from and things like that. And, and yeah, you know, um, I don't know. I've always liked same thing. I, I mean, even, even being like the youngest of, you know, having three older brothers and stuff, I've always wanted to be and have been self-reliant and, oh. and, you know, just, I, you know, collecting things, even though I didn't need them, but, you know, it was, it was just being prepared and things like that. But, but yeah, I mean, yeah, especially after turning 21 and, you know, um, I like the idea of, of self-protection and, and personal defense and, and I like the amendments and, you know, I'll tell you what, I had a super scary experience where I kind of had like a sixth sense in, intuition type deal where actually one of the, you know, the brothers at the time had left the, the downstairs sliding door unlocked uh -huh. and it was like cracked. And there was someone upstairs in my parents' bedroom. And like, I kind of just like knew we were like in the, in the kitchen at the time, which was like the second floor. And I was like, yo, so, you know, somehow I kind of just know, you know, this is kind of what's happening. And, you know, nothing was more vulnerable and scary than like us literally like sprinting down to the garage. I picked up my dog, Rocky, and, and I told oh. the brothers like, hey, you know, like there's someone up here, like we need to fucking book it to the garage. And nothing was more scary than... You know, hearing someone that was uninvited to my room, my parents' How room. How old were my, you? My, How old were you? Fuck, dude. Uh, like 13, 14. And it was super scary because like, you know, obviously, you know, the gun is like the ultimate equalizer. Um, yes. But, you know, we, we literally, you know, because we played sports and stuff like that. But, but we had gonna, like. Yeah, I wouldn't want to break into your course. house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> luckily, yeah, luckily, you know, stuff is different now. But, but anyways, you know, it just it just comes from you know, hey, um, like, why why does uh, someone have a hammer? I mean, a hammer can be you know multi multifaceted and things like that. And and I've always just seen things like that as as tools and and also just fun hobbies. Like growing up, we didn't my you know parents didn't have a whole bunch of excess money for us to like the only money the excess money that they kind of had. For like side things where it were sports you know it wasn't necessarily like oh hey we're gonna go uh snowboarding or oh hey we're gonna go you know to do things like this so uh, mm -hmm. shooting and you know just becoming accurate and things like that was always fun i mean as a kid having bb guns and, and airsoft oh, guns god and, did you, you have know, those pneumatic skill. pen pumps and everybody would cheat do you remember that uh i'm, I'm trying if, if you have this thing well, i know the you could do but with the 10 pumps they had back in the 70s and 80s we would play a game called you know shoot your little brother with the bb gun now the rule was okay you could only, you could only pump it once but oh. invariably somebody would get Jeez. pissed off and when somebody got pissed yeah. off they'd cheat they'd go behind the bush you know uh the arbavita bush and they'd uh give it two pumps and then he'd yeah. hurt the, kid, oh, other yeah. kid. the other kid get pissed off and say fuck this he'd go one two <laughs> three pumps next thing you know Blood's being drawn and uh oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you mean, dude. No, I, I remember one time I had kind of like a very scary experience where same thing, it's just with one of those pump pump BB guns, but mm -hmm. um this is where I learned like just how important safety is and, and just being precautionary and also that ricochets can happen. But uh, you know, same oh. thing had had pumped you know, the BB gun and, and, you know, sometimes I'll shoot lefty with, with rifles and stuff, but so I went to go shoot the tree and literally it hits the tree and it, I, I, 
hear it kind of come back and, and hit like this uh, plank or whatever it was right next to me. And I just remember thinking, holy shit, that could have, that was so close to my eye. And then I learned, you know, obviously, you know, thankfully I didn't get my eye like shot out or anything like that. Right, so, you right. know, you learn to use protection and, and the, oh. you know, ricochet and backstops and stuff. Yeah. But I have a story anyways. and I actually have a piece of proof that I think is so interesting that I want to show it to you guys. I'll tell you what, um, do have a couple other things to cover, but maybe not so much the uh, personal questions. I want to thank you, brother, for the ones that you did um, share a little bit of your life and your life story with us. And um, I'm going to bring the old uh, uh, Michael Lung, a.k.a. Cool. Finn Bear in here. Um, cool. I'll stay for like another five and then I'm going to go hang out. With the okay, girl. I'm going to.